subscribe to Dr. Khalkar's classroom channel and press the bell icon to get latest updates. Hello everyone, I hope you are doing great. In my previous lecture video, I have discussed about semiconductor laser and CO2 gas laser. Along with that, applications of lasers in various fields. In this video, I am going to explain optic fiber. So let's get started. In this video on optic fiber part 1, I will discuss about introduction of optic fiber and its important parameters, followed by propagation of light inside the optic fiber. Have you ever thought about how you get calls and SMS on your smartphone? Have you ever thought about how you get emails or any other information from any corner of the world within a blink of an eye? This has been made possible by network cables, which are laid under the ground and below the ocean. The cables which carry the most of world's data are optical fiber cables. Let's learn how optical fiber works and how they have revolutionized the world around us. Optical fiber cable is made up of thousands of fiber strands. A single fiber strand is as thin as a human hair. Optical fibers carry information in the form of light. Let's learn the fundamental concept of light to understand the optic fiber. The speed of light changes when it passes through a medium and this change in speed is expressed by refractive index. This variation in the refractive index leads to another interesting phenomena that is refraction. Here is one example. If laser light is passes through a glass medium from air medium, there is a change in its speed. Hence, refractive index is refractive index n is equal to speed of light in vacuum upon speed of light in a medium. To understand refraction, let's consider light passes through a prism. At the interface, light gets bent instead of going straight. This phenomena is called refraction. Refraction occurs when light passes from one medium to another with a one refractive index to the one with another refractive index. The light bends. The light bends towards the interface when it goes from a medium of high to one of low refractive indices. Refraction is reason why a pencil looks bent in a glass of water. This simple refraction technique is effectively used in optic fibers. Using some dopant, we are able to increase the refractive index of glass. As we increase the refractive index, the light will bend more and more towards the surface. After a time, you can see that light will pass through the surface of the glass. If we increase the refractive index further, the light will suddenly come back to the first medium as a pure reflection. This is called total internal reflection, TIR. Total internal reflection is possible if we increase the incident angle rather than the increasing the refractive index. In this case, at a certain angle called critical angle, the light will come back to the first medium. This total internal reflection phenomena is used in optical fiber cable to transmit the light. Now let's understand the structure of optical fiber cable. What is optic fiber? The optic fiber is a cylindrical, long, thin, transparent structure made up of glass, plastic, or dielectric materials, which is designed to guide the light wave from one end to the another end. The light inside the fiber is guided on the principle of total internal reflection. Optical fibers are widely used in fiber optic communications to send information data. Here are a few images of optic fibers.
the basic structure of an optic fiber consists of four parts the core the cladding and the coating or buffer which are coaxially arranged over that there is a jacket which is a shield the innermost region is called the core the light in the fiber travels only in the core the core is surrounded by cladding which is responsible for keeping the light inside the core the refractive index of core n1 is greater than the refractive index of cladding that is n2 the outermost region is called buffer or the shield which protects the core and cladding from external abrasions. Now let's see the important parameters of optic fiber. First is critical angle. The critical angle is the angle of incidence where the angle of refraction is 90 degree. The light must travel from an optically more dense medium to an optically less dense medium. So here theta c is a critical angle. When the angle of incidence is equal to the critical angle, the angle of refraction is equal to 90 degrees. Then we can write critical angle theta c is equal to theta i and theta r is equal to 90 degrees. Therefore, according to Snell's law equation, a generic equation for finding the critical angle theta c can be derived easily as follows n i into sine theta c is equal to n r into sine theta r. Therefore, we can write n i into sine theta c is equal to n r into sine 90 degrees. So, sine 90 degrees is equal to 1. So, we can write n i into sine theta c is equal to n r. Therefore, rearranging this equation, we can write sine theta c is equal to nr upon ni therefore theta c critical angle is equal to sine inverse into nr upon ni or we can write this equation as theta c is equal to sine inverse n2 upon n1 where n1 is a refractive index of medium 1 and n2 is a refractive index of medium 2. So this is the equation of critical angle theta c. Next important parameter of optic fiber is total internal reflection. This is we have already discussed earlier. As I discussed before, when the ray of light is passed from denser medium to the rarer medium and the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle, the incident light is reflected back in the denser medium. This phenomena is called as a total internal reflection. The conditions for total internal reflections are light is traveling from an optically denser medium that is higher refractive index N2 to an optically less dense medium that is lower refractive index N1. The angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle that is theta c. Here is the actual picture. It shows total internal reflection of laser light in the medium. Next important parameter of optic fiber is acceptance angle that is theta i max. The acceptance angle of an optic fiber is defined based on a purely geometrical consideration that is ray optics. It is the maximum angle of a ray against the fiber axis hitting the fiber core which allows the incident light to be guided by the core. It is the maximum angle to the axis of the optic fiber that light entering the fiber is guided in the core. The acceptance angle theta i max is shown in this figure where n1 and n2 are the refractive indices of core and cladding respectively. Therefore, we can write the formula theta i max is equal to sine inverse of under root of n1 square minus n2 square. Next important parameter of optic fiber is acceptance cone that is 2 theta of i max. It is the maximum angle to the axis of the fiber that light entering the fiber is guided in the core. Therefore acceptance cone we can write 
2 theta i max is equal to 2 sine inverse of under root of n1 square minus n2 square where n1 is the refractive index of the core and n2 is the refractive index of the cladding. So as shown in this diagram the acceptor cone which has the value 2 theta i max. Next important parameter of optic fiber is numerical aperture abbreviated as NA. The numerical aperture is the sign of acceptance angle. So we have the equation for accepting angle it is Na is equal to sin of theta i max. So which equal to sin of sin inverse under root of n1 square minus n2 square. So after simplification this equation we can write the numerical aperture is equal to under root of n1 square minus n2 square. Now let's try to understand the phenomena of propagation of light inside the optic fiber. How it works? The light in the fiber is guided inside the core of the fiber by the principle of total internal reflection. For this, the following condition must satisfy. The refractive index of core N1 must be greater than the refractive index of the cladding that is N2. At the core and the cladding interface, the angle of incidence must be greater than the critical angle that is theta c. So therefore we can write sin of theta c is equal to N2 upon N1. Theta c is equal to sin inverse of N2 upon N1 where N1 is a refractive index of medium 1 and N2 is a refractive index of medium 2. Now let us consider a multi-mode step index fiber that is MMSIF. This is one of type of optic fiber. We will see the types of optic fiber in detail in next videos. So consider multi-mode step index fiber in which the light is launched from medium of refractive index N0 and it is the incident at an angle of theta i with respect to the axis. The light undergoes refraction at point A. The ray refracts into the core of fiber at angle theta r which is theta i is greater than theta r that is angle of incidence is greater than angle of refraction where the refractive index N0 is the refractive index mostly the medium is air. So the ray reaches to core cladding interface at point B if the angle of incidence phi is greater than the angle that is the critical angle theta C the light ray will suffer total internal reflections that is TIR and reach at point C. At point C again the ray suffers total internal reflections thus this ray will stay within the fiber. Thus in a multi-mode step index fiber the light follows a zigzag path as shown here in this diagram. Therefore the ray refracts into the core of fiber at angle theta r that is theta i is greater than theta r. According to the Snell's law, at the launching end of the fiber, sin theta i upon sin theta r is equal to n1 upon n0. Hence, sin theta i is equal to n1 upon n0 sin theta r. Therefore, as shown in this diagram, in triangle ABN, theta r is equal to 90 minus phi. Therefore, we can write sin theta i is equal to n1 upon n0 sine of theta r is nothing but 90 minus phi that is equal to n1 upon n0 cos of phi. Therefore at theta i is equal to phi max and phi is equal to phi c. Therefore sine theta i max is equal to n1 upon n0 cos of phi c as sin theta c is equal to n2 upon n1. Then we can write cos of phi c is equal to under root of n1 square minus n2 square divided by n1. Therefore sin theta i max 
is equal to n1 upon n0 into under root of n1 square minus n2 square divided by n1 simply by putting the value of cos of phi c. So therefore rearranging this equation theta i max is equal to sine inverse of under root of n1 square minus n2 square divided by n0. Generally the light is launched in air so refractive index of air is n0 is equal to 1. Therefore the acceptance angle is theta i max is equal to sine inverse under root of n1 square minus n2 square. So this is the equation of acceptance angles when the light propagation is takes place in the optic fiber. So let's find out the another equations that is acceptance angle theta i max. So acceptance angle is nothing but it is the render form of the equation which is called the acceptance angle of the fiber and it is the maximum angle to the axis of the fiber that light entering the fiber is guided in the core. So theta i max is equal to sine inverse under root of n1 square minus n2 square. Similarly the acceptance cone that is 2 theta i max in three dimensions the ray within the acceptance angle will be guided in the core of the fiber forms a cone therefore 2 theta i max is equal to 2 sine inverse of under root of n1 square minus n2 square. So these are the two equations for the propagation of the light inside the optic fiber. Now let's see the numerical aperture of the fiber that is Na. The numerical aperture is the sine of acceptance angle that we have already discussed before. The Na is equal to sine of theta i max is equal to under root of n1 square minus n2 square divided by n0. But for air, refractive index n0 is equal to 1. So after simplification this equation we can write Na is equal to under root of n1 square minus n2 square. So this is the numerical aperture which determines the light gathering ability of the fiber. It measures the amount of light accepted by the fiber. So all these equations gives us the information about the propagation of the light inside the optical fiber. This is all about introduction of optic fiber and the important parameters of it and uh, the propagation of light inside the optical fiber. In my next lecture video, I will discuss about types of optic fiber, attenuation and reasons of losses in optical fiber, then optical fiber communication system, their pros and cons of optical fiber and applications of optical fiber in various fields. So don't miss my next lecture video. Thank you. Below this video in the description, the link of important information related to this video is given. Please go through it. Please like and share this video and subscribe to Dr. Khalkar's classroom channel to get the notifications about my upcoming videos. Thank you.